Welcome back to a new episode of Everlasting Summer. This time we will attempt to get uh, the bad ending for Lena. This time we'll help Alicia. Alicia! What are you doing? Uh, we should not help Alicia. Did we help Alicia or not help Alicia last time? Yeah, yeah, okay. What are you doing? Uh, this is it? Like... Oh, nothing changed. Will we get the good ending again? Yeah, we had sex. We had sex again. Oh, bad ending. It was close to 10 p.m. Well, it is probably time to get up. I give Lena a gentle nudge on the shoulder. She opened her eyes. Hmm, what? <coughs> good morning. Well, evening, in fact. Hi. She smiled tenderly. Time to get up, uh, sleepyhead. Are you in hurry? Well, no. But we completely alone together in the camp. I like it this way. Uh, so what? She took a good look at me. Uh, well, nothing. When will all your turn? Is it that important to you? Well, yeah. She got a heavy look in her face. Well, without food, we are going to die here. I laughed. You are free to leave then. Oh shit, look at this fist. She looked the way toward the wall. But how can I leave? On the bus, of course. Uh, there are no buses here. Then why do you think there are bus stop for the bus route 410 there? Frankly, I don't know. I told Olga that I have some matter to orally resolve here with you and we come later. What? I felt like I have been uh, stuck by lighting. Will she do the crazy face? She go totally crazy, huh? I didn't know what I should be more surprised about. The fact that there are uh, buses passing here or by the fact that the camp leader argued to leave two pioneers beyond the empty camp just like that. Yeah, all guys suck. What I said? You mean that we can leave? Go on, no one holding you. She said all that while sitting on three still, in fact, so still that uh, her word gave me grave cold chill. Okay, I'm sorry that I react that way. It just everything that happened today has been a total surprise to me. You didn't look too surprised a few hours ago. I went, well, oh. Well, I expect a good body of this, hmm. You have probably said something wrong, completely wrong. Well, don't get offended. We won't be staying here till the end of time, right? There are... If there a way to leave, Lena didn't say anything. I looked at her back and tried to understand what is she thinking. Fine. She just overreacted to everything. She exclaimed cheerfully after pass, then jumped off uh, the bed, the bed, and started to dress quickly. Come on, make your stuff. Meet me at the square. Ten minutes. Lena leaned over and uh, gave me a passion kiss. <coughs> All right. I stepped out of her cabin and ran to the camp leader cabin. Frankly speaking, I had almost nothing to pick. I tossed my winter clothes into a bag, shoved my phone into my bucket, and head to the swim. Fifteen minutes has have passed already, but Lena still wasn't uh, here. I justified uh, it with the fact that she has a lot of stuff to pack, and accordingly, she needs much more time to get ready. However, she didn't come even in half an hour and start to suspect something. My legs ushered me her cabin before I realized it. Did she kill herself? I flew to the door and opened so Lena lying on the bed. Did she kill herself? 
Everything around her was shocked with the blood. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, the bed sheet, uh, the blanket, the floor was uh, wet with blood, and I can see a huge slide on Lena. I uh, ran to her and started uh, shaking her by her shoulder. Lena, Lena, why? She was still con conscious. Hi, Simon. A weak smile froze on her lips. Uh, hang on, hi. Uh, don't you pass out? I'll think of something. Uh, right now, listen. Everything going to be fine. You, you, you're not going to die. Of course, I didn't believe it myself. Lena had slid her vein from her elbow all the way down to her waist. It was a deep cut, and given all the time I have spent waiting for her to square, she bled a lot. Probably even an ambulance wouldn't do anything by now. And here in the empty camp, away from the world, Lena had zero chance of survival. <sighs> How stupid can you be? I embarrassed and held her tightly. Tears were running down my cheek, uh, disappearing in her hair. I have never cried so hard in my entire life. Cool, why did you have to cut down you cut down the road? Everyone else does it across the street. And you cut down the road? Sorry. It happened as it did. She muted apparently. But why? Why? I'm tired. So tired. Lena went silent. I looked straight into her eyes. She was still conscious, but the last flock of her life was quickly dying in her. I am so tired of it all. Wearing a mask. Suffering. Just wanted to be with you. Uh, you can be with me, but you are left me too. I didn't left you. Uh, I never went anywhere. Here I am. Why? Why have you done? I'm sorry. I was choked with tears and able to say anything. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll be seeing you later in heaven. I impressed her even tightly. Lena breath was getting weaker and soon enough uh, to stop forever. A uh, horror struck. I jumped away from the bed. My eyes went dark. My heart was beaten wildly and spotted the blood-stained knife lying on the floor. A moment later, I was holding it on my hand. The blade held hair beneath a wave my worst. But why? How could that happen? I said they're completely freaking out and just stared at Lena. No, you aren't dead. I swear the hasty laughter. Come on, sleephead. It's time to wake up. I said softly and shocked her by the shoulder. But Lena didn't wake up. What am I? What have I done? I jumped off the cabin in horror and ran like a mad. I don't know how much time passed out. Finally, I wore myself out of the collapse on the ground. As I silently was all around me and only the stars looked down on me quietly, repoke. There were the some stars that uh, Lena admired yesterday. Yet another cry spell tore me apart. Why? Why did she do it? Because I left her? Where had I gone? Never left her and wasn't going to. Only at this moment did I realize that she was truly important to me. I realized that despite all her quirks, everything that happened today, everything that happened during the short period of our work, and she suddenly became the most precious thing in my life. And I instantly forgotten about her, about her feeling, as soon as I had about that damn bus. Indeed, it can't justify her act, but how could I have stopped thinking of her at all? I lie there for a long time watching the stops. The trees was peacefully swaying in the gentle night breezing above my head. 
The trees didn't give a damn about what was happening to me. The landscape seemed familiar. Surprise, uh, suppressing my fears, I headed back toward the camp. Everything here seemed to be the same as yesterday, as a few days ago. The square, the Genda Memorial, the cabin of pioneers, Lena cabin. I was all torn up inside. It felt like the pain would tear my body into millions of little pieces any moment now. I fell to my knee and began punching the ground until my fists were completely stained with the blood. If only I'd realized just a bit earlier, just a moment earlier, I'm not asking for more. She was so... So even the slight of hint was enough for her. Only at the moment did I realize that Lena had died, and a part of me had died with her. Probably the part of me that I would call the best. I came to my sense after a while standing in her cabin. The blood had dried up already, the moonlight was no longer reflect in it. I went to her bed and sat down next to Lena's body. I was terribly afraid of to be here, but I felt that I had to tell her something. I'm sorry. It's far too late, of course, but if you can hear me out there somewhere, just remember, please, I will love you forever. No, let you idiot for the rest of my life. <laughs> and that was the plain truth. I'm sorry that I ignore your feeling. I'm sorry that I always thought only about myself. I'm sorry for everything. It was me who should have died, not you. I covered her body with a blanket and slowly left the cat. Wow, this is so heavy. I was expecting bad ending. Do you remember when I was thinking the good ending is the bad ending? Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, after Sylvia, bad ending, I didn't expect to be this bad. Wow. I regained conscious at the bus stop. So, running away, scumbag. I muted directly at myself. Couldn't stand to stay a single minute longer in this camp. Lena will never come back. I can't justify what I have done. I'll just w wait for the boss that will take me away from him. I didn't give the slight damn about what's going to happen to me tomorrow or an hour. I don't care about answers. I don't care about how I get here. Soon enough, I saw a glimmer of a dim light in the distance. Somehow, I wasn't surprised at all. In a minute, I was sitting in the empty number 410 bus and was looking into the dark of the night through the weather-beaten window. My mind was blank. Everything that makes us human, feeling, emotion, aspire, suffering, I left it all back there in the pioneer camp. Now all I have is uh, this night and the empty bus. There is no more future, no more present. If I died tomorrow, that will only mean that yet another human body has case to existence. The real me died there a few hours ago. <sighs> wow. I don't know how much time passed, but the footage overtook me. I wasn't going to fight. It is it as if made absolutely no difference what uh, whether I am sleeping or awake. I could barely hold my eyes open and soon enough I passed out. <sighs> that was very depressing. Day dot dot dot. Wow. Very, very, very depressing. There are a moment when reality become an uh, attention. There are a moment when you separate moment moment overshadow everything else. And even if the world ended, you would not notice. 
If a knife were to price you, you would not notice. Even boil for eternity in the uh, corridor of hell will seem like just a minor inconvenience. After all, there are problems more important than that. When I opened my eye, I realized that something is wrong. It took a while to shut it through the return. But here, we back to home, to our really pathetic, pathetic life. Finally, I realized that I'm not in the boss, but in my old apartment. Well, that was to be expected. As if I'd spend a whole week preparing for an exam and, and the last minute had a spirit of failure. And the result of this failure was my return to the real world. However, now I didn't seem any more real to me than the Sovonok Pioneer Camp. No wonder, reality is uh, what you can hear, feel, touch, and taste. And all that was uh, really there. That world was real to the smallest detail. Sometimes it seemed more like it was my best life that I was a fiction. And now I have to remember how to exist here. So why? I felt like a man who be thrown out of the car at full speed without even noticing it. And was left lying on the roadside with the broken arms and legs while the car disappeared into the night, taking with it the last trace of hope. Lena. Her image had surfaced in my fever brain so closely that I went to cry in bearable. No? I want to shout tearing out a clumsy of hair, smashing my fist on the wall while making inhuman uh, screams. However, my soul were empty. I tried in vain to find at last uh, the echo of pain, guilt, or pity for her, but nothing came. I was just uh, lying here and starting at ceiling. I was not at all interested in how and why I came back. After all, who care about the process of uh, selling your soul to the devil, all the legal formalities of the contract, signature, stamp, and seal. What is more important is the result, and that is the result I got. No, it's not uh, that I was uh, sent back to reality. If I had gotten to the determination of the boss, it would hardly have changed anything for me. In that uh, case, uh, the result is uh, what happened to Lena, and the reason is my actions. Uh, he was absolutely sure about that. After all, she could not just uh, do that uh, for no reason. No, Lena is not that like that. So, it's all my fault. It is hard uh, to live uh, knowing that uh, you were the reason for someone else that. And all that because I returned to the game and didn't pick uh, some strawberry with her. That's all what I did to uh, change the result of uh, good ending to bad ending. Oh, for one picnic. As if I personally held the knife, calmly and carefully slide open her worst and watch her die. And then just run away. Of course I couldn't do anything in that uh, situation but I still felt that I'd behave like a coward. No, even worse, although does it uh, really matter what the best uh, definition of my action is? I curse myself for remaining so calm while thinking about uh, this situation. After all, I should be moaning uh, Lena and blaming myself. But that was a dream. <sighs> but now nothing is up to me. If I was not able to back then, I started uh, uh, shivering my body was trembling and it was uh, getting hard to breathe. self revision and a stinge skin overtook guilt for a while and struggle the night uh, kitchen to uh, drive sedated. 
They can always be found in the cupboard of every antisocial person like me. Once I take half of the uh, tablets that were in the bucket, I return to the room and turn on the computer. Remaining in silence was unbearable. I played the first random song and soon realized that it was probably the most uh, depressing piece of music I had on my hard drive. Subconsciously picked the worst song ever, huh? However, I didn't want to turn it off. The background noise helped down my thought. I had to decide what uh, to do with my life next. I was sure about one thing. Everything that happened in the camp, my appearance in it, my unexpected return. I didn't care about any of it. And I know uh, just that I didn't care about the context or the reasoning for this event either. The only thing that mattered was Lena. Lena! <laughs> I horribly stumbled over the word was. Indeed, she gone. Of course, it's uh, possible that it was just a dream and she never existed in the first place, but then again, or our real world could just be someone raving delusion as well. Why not? If people suffer from losing their loved one here, why should I think Lena death there is just a result of my sick imagination? <sighs> I saw it all with my own eye. I felt the shock, fear, and fright. Damn it. For me, it's not that it was reality, it still is reality and is and will be. And I am sure I am not daydreaming. Though it will be better if I damn that the dreadful how of a guitar's boom from speaker. It sounds like a requirement. A requirement for me. And now I have to live with that sense of guilt. No, I won't take it. My mind wasn't exactly a paragon of uh, stability, but not even man with a stable mind could withstand shock like that. And I already feel that I'm going mad. I try to su bore, uh, suppress all these thoughts. No, not to forget, just to give myself some rest. Just for a moment. But it didn't work. Pain warped my body again and again. I was already starting to feel it uh, physical. However, physical pain is always weaker than mental. I fell to the floor, uh, could spit my knee, and began rocking back and forth in fetal position. Blood bounded in my head so heavily that it uh, felt like my skull could shatter any moment now. I hit a table leg and little candle roll out from under bell paper. It's little uh, 20 centimeter long. It was bent in almost 90 degree angle but still retained its shape. The wax brought it from one end. I set for a lighter and lit up the candle. Let it be in the memory of Lena. Maybe in another world she is uh, feeling better than. Maybe she married to you, have two children, and you become a great writer. I sat on the floor and watched uh, as the wax slowly uh, dripped into my fingers. I felt no pain at all, probably my nervous system was so exhausted that it was unable to trim, transmit the pain in below to my brain. The fire calmed my little and watched the flame and did not uh, think about anything. Finally, at last some peace of mind. The candle was halfway at dawn. Suddenly, I imagine that my life is uh, this uh, very candle. Not just uh, mine, any person life. All that was have been given from above uh, is it falling. 
When anything can happen, the wind may blow, the holding hand may uh, tremble, or which may burn out. And a life will end before it should have. But after all, each candle can be different. Such as this one, 9 cm, 1 twice as thick, 20 and huge one, as thick as the handle of shovel, 1. 0.85 I wonder, did Lena Kendall burn out ahead of its time or was it just smaller than the one? So I doubt there can be one smaller than mine. I related the candle in my hands. How interesting is that I can blow out this flame one any moment and that it. But in that meantime, life is not wax. You can't combine two small candles and make one medium size. I would love to give the remaining of mine to Lena. To anyone who uh, need it more than I do. Why would I need it? I do not uh, feel pain from the hated wax. Its flame does not give me any warm at all. It hardly emulates the room. To put it bluntly, a uh, waste of rope, wax, and oxygen. I blow out the candle. This action evoked absolutely no emotion in me. I slowly stood up and headed to the bathroom. <sighs> Very depressing. Did he kill himself? Oh my god, cut down the road, not across the street? Uh, everyone else cut ac uh, across, but you going right down the... The image of Lena appeared before my eyes. She was smiling. We'll definitely meet again. I'm so sorry, warm water. Shadow and dying dream have finally brought me some peace. It really might be that I never actually went to that camp, or that I never actually came back. But does it really matter now? I almost uh, physically felt Lena embrace. Everything will be alright. We'll catch the bus together and ride it to the place where nobody will find us. Whatever, we'll, uh, we'll be happy together. My strength left me and I started to sink into the water that was already spoiled over with edge of time. We will surely meet. Forgive me. Wow! Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synopsis, content, keyboard, a prologue, and an end blog. And there is no book which, if you read it again, which will not reveal a new detail you didn't notice before. Every story has its beginning and its end. Almost every. So this is the end. Well, yeah. So this is the end of uh, Lena Root. This is the bad ending. It was very bad ending. <laughs> this is why I want to do the bad ending before the good ending, and I screw up with uh, Lena. But because uh, the going trap for the what's called uh, the. Strawberry Island was two point, not one point. So I miss up what with one point, and in the end it was okay, all fine. Not fine, but yeah, we get the bad ending now. I want the bad ending before because the feel, the good ending will feel much better after bad ending. But yeah, now you see how it's 
feel like feel like nightmare. More like it. Whew. So next time will be Alicia. And after Alicia, Juliana. 